Hey guys, how are you all doing? I'm Paul the Tech Giant and welcome to the channel. Now I've got another TV unboxing for you and today it is the turn of this. 50 inch Samsung Q60T QLED. Got to give a massive thanks to the guys at box.co.uk for sending over the Samsung Q60T as if it wasn't for them sending me over these TVs, I wouldn't be able to make these videos for you guys at home. So please support the channel by buying them from Box. I'll be leaving a link in the description. And don't forget that they offer a free five year warranty on TVs like this, and they also price match. So there is no good reason not to buy from them. So please go and check out that link in the description. Now I'm going to be doing this video in my regular style and if you don't know what that is, well I'm about to tell you. So what we're going to start off by doing is giving you guys a tour around the outside of the box, take some measurements, we get the TV out of the box, have a look at the supplied accessories. Once we've done that then we will fit these wall mounting brackets to the TV itself, get it up on the wall, get it fired up, test out the picture and sound quality. So without further ado, let's Crack on. Starting off at the front of the box end, and as we can see, this is the Samsung Q60T QLED, and it is 50 inches or 125 centimeters. Move on up, and it says 4K Ultra HD connected, HDR10 Plus, Smart TV powered by Tizen. Alexa built in, Google Assistant, and works with Apple AirPlay. Moving on up to the top, and we have some dimensions here for the uh, distance between the two feet. As we can see on the front of the box there, they're quite uh, spread apart. So you might wanna take note of these if you think about putting them on like a uh, table top or something like that. So the uh, Dimensions are 995.8 millimeters between those two feet. Right, next up, we're gonna take some measurements of the box. This may come in handy if you're looking to store the box somewhere or transport it in a car. So we'll start off with the longest measurement. And that comes in at approximately 125 centimeters or 49 and a quarter inches. Next up is the depth, and we're looking at 14 and a half centimeters, or what's that, five and three quarter inches. And then finally, the height, and that is 78 centimeters, or 30 and three quarter inches. Now that's all done, it's time to get this uh, TV out of the box. Oh, very satisfying cutting that tape. Right, so uh, the top part then, we have the, uh, like the feet. Then we have our accessory kit. Then our quick start guide and a sticker. Now we've got the TV out of the box and onto the floor. Let's take a quick look at the connections. Now these are on the right hand side of the TV as you're looking at the TV straight on. And those connections are as follows. So we've got an aerial slash cable, then satellite, HDMI 1, HDMI 2, which is eARC. And then we've got one, two USBs. Then we've got a third HDMI, a optical digital, red, white, and yellow video and audio, LAN cable, and uh, we've got the common interface there. Then moving to the center, we've got four holes there for our wall mounting brackets. We'll be taking measurements of those in a second. And then to the right, so the left-hand side of the TV, if you're looking at it straight on, is the power cable. 
Next up, we're gonna take some measurements of these wall mounting bracket holes. And if you wanna know what size screws or bolts that you're gonna require, you're gonna need 39 to 41 millimeter M8. So four of those, obviously, I know a lot of you guys ask me what bolts you're gonna require. So uh, hopefully that will be useful information to a few of you out there. So going for the dimensions here, going from the bottom to the top, and that is 20 centimetres. And left to right is 20 centimetres again, so 20 by 20. Now going from the top hole to the top of the TV, that is approximately 14 centimetres or five and a half inches and from the bottom hole to the bottom of the TV that is 30 or oh, what's that 30 and a quarter centimeters or one foot right going to fit my wall mounting brackets to the back of the TV and these are the bolts I'm using like I said they are 40 mil and uh yeah if you don't know what 40 mil looks like well that is them and uh yeah quite long it's very uh deep in the back of the TV Right, next up, we can take a look at the accessory kit. So I do like the way that you Samsung do this. It's all neatly laid out. So what do we have? So we have our user manual there and some other sheets of paper. This first section, I don't think there's going to be much in that. So there's a layout of the connections there. Right, so good news is that here in the UK anyway, by looks at it, we get two remote controls. So this is your basic one here. So you can see you've got some uh, shortcuts on there. Uh, nice little remote. Like I say, basic, but you know, does all the uh, jobs. Then we've got our more swanky remote. Now, this seems to be exactly the same on all the TVs this year, again, here in the UK anyway, that we seem to be supplied with two remotes, one cheapo one and a better one. Nice slim design on that. Again, a few shortcuts, and you've got these little toggle sort of switches there, directional buttons. Very nice. Oh, and this one does have a microphone in it so uh, you should be able to do your voice commands with that so we've got uh, that there I think that's to do with the common interface two sets of batteries obviously uh, one set for each remote and then finally the power cable so uh, just quickly unwind this and uh, we'll take some measurements see how long it is and as suspected, we are looking at approximately 1.5 meters. Now we've looked at the accessories, I think it's time we get this TV up on the wall. Well, that was simple enough. And uh, next thing that we've got to do is uh, pull off the protective sides here. So easy enough to do. Not much fun if I'm honest. I prefer uh, peeling off the big screen protectors. But there you go. TV now is all connected up to the mains. I've also connected up an HDMI lead to my satellite box. We've got a red LED to indicate we've got power going to the TV. So all that's left to do is to turn it on for the first time. Right, we're now presented with this setup page and I've uh, just had to quickly pop the lights on because we are losing the light outside. So I'm gonna be setting up this TV using the remote control as it says up there. This is simple enough to do, but I'm not gonna bother boring you guys with this step. So I'll meet you guys once I've completed the setup. And as you can see, the TV is all up and running. So what I'm gonna do is just fire up the uh, main home menu here and give you guys a little tour. So if we scroll all the way to the left, 
as you can see just there we've got our settings this just gives you some uh, shortcuts or it says there uh, quick settings so you've got your uh, picture mode sound mode sound output and uh, game mode so pretty handy to have those right there then we've got our source and as you can see it's highlighted there for sky which is my satellite box and one thing i do like about these tvs that it actually comes up with a proper icon for you know that device that is the actual sky logo so i think that's a nice little touch then we have search then we have apps ambient mode and uh, there we've got our Samsung account. Then we have our sort of main bar just moving along here with all our apps on it. So you can see that again for my Skybox, I can sort of control that from here. So my recordings and all that sort of stuff, which is really, really good. Got all our favorites, Netflix, Prime Video. Here in the UK, we've got our catch up stuff like ITV, uh, BBC iPlayer, we've got just down the end there my five four uh, you've got your internet samsung health um, youtube obviously and apple tv which is probably one of my most favorite apps and uh, as you probably may notice as i'm scrolling along to each different thing so i say go to itv it brings up another sort of a uh, bar there of shortcuts of the most popular things just there go on to prime video nothing on there um netflix and all you do is then click up if you see something you like and you can jump straight into it without without you having to go right into the netflix app itself which i think is really good Right, let's quickly have a look at the settings menu. So let's uh, get that up. So we've got our picture options there. And uh, we'll go to pitch mode to see what we got. So we've got dynamic, which is yet yeah, very bright as you'd expect. Standard, natural, and movie. And if we just go down to the expert settings, and sure enough, like other uh, models from this year, they have done away with uh, an adjustment for the backlight. It now comes under brightness. So when you adjust brightness before, that would sort of wash out the screen as you increase it or make it very dark as you go uh, down. This just now controls the backlight. Uh, so if I just give you a demonstration of that now, so if I just knock that down, don't know how well that's come up on camera. But just like that, so it's basically brightness is now what most of us would know is like the LED backlight. So I just thought I'd point that out for you guys because you might be getting confused. And I know I've had a few people come to me saying, I can't find that option. You know, where is it? Why am I missing it? So uh, there you go. Now, I can't show you too much of regular TV due to copyright reasons, but I just have a quick flick through a few of the channels so you can just get a rough idea of what the picture quality is like on this. What I will do in a minute as well is fire up a piece of my own 4K HDR footage so we can uh, see what that looks like. So yeah, doesn't look too bad. Um, you know, this is the entry level QLED. So, I'm, you know, I'm not expecting it to be as good as some of the TVs that I've recently tested. You know, I've tested, you know, 8K QLEDs, OLEDs, you know, the top of the range sort of stuff. And, uh, you know, I'm not expecting it to be on a par with that. But, you know, it is a QLED model. So it should be still a fairly decent TV. 4K HDR 10 plus footage up now and that looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm sure you guys would agree. Now this is, like I said, a piece of my own footage that I've uploaded to YouTube. I'll put a link in the description if you want to go and check this out for yourselves. And uh, when I originally put it up, someone pulled me up about it and says, hey, YouTube don't support HDR10+. And I looked on the Samsung TV I was uh, testing at the time, and sure enough, it just said HDR. But having a quick look on here now, and sure enough, it says HDR10+. So uh, that is a great bit of uh, useful information for you there. So yeah, looking at this image, it does look nice and vibrant and sharp. Obviously, the brightness is up all the way at the moment um, due to being HDR. And obviously, we've got the uh, strong lighting in here as well. 
But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with that picture, to be fair, seeing though this is an entry level model. You know, let me know what you guys think. Just move around slightly over here. Yeah, nice image in all fairness. Right, so let's uh, press on and uh, let's test out the speakers. Got some tunes fired up, courtesy of no copyright sounds. And uh, let's just turn the volume up a little bit on this. Now I'm not expecting this to be the best speakers in the world on a TV, uh, because it is only a 50 inch TV at the end of the day. So it's limited sort of space on the size of the speakers they can cram in there. So let's go down to the sound settings. So we've got standard, adaptive, and uh, amplify. Let's put on the amplify one. That's yeah, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Quality's fairly good. Just wait for the beat to come in and see what that sounds like. So yeah, as I suspected, it's lacking a little bit in the low end there. But it's certainly not an offensive sound, that's for sure. So yeah, overall, not bad considering the size of the TV. I mean, if you are concerned that the sound ain't gonna be that great, then, you know, potentially look at sound bar. Saying that, that, there's a little bit of bass to it just there, that note there near the sitting, that sounded pretty good. Yeah, a bit of bass kicking in there. But it's just on that beat, it seems to be missing a bit. But overall, not bad. Like I keep saying, you know, this is the entry level QLED model. You know, they're not gonna give you all the best stuff because they gotta save that for the higher up models. Well, there you have it then, guys. Now, I will be doing some gaming tests with this TV with both my Xbox One X and my PlayStation 4 Pro. So if you are into your gaming, you may wanna keep an eye out for those videos coming very soon. Now, if you have enjoyed this video today, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, then think about subscribing for more of the same in the future. And please make sure you hit that bell icon because otherwise you will not be notified of my latest uploads. So thanks very much for joining me today and hopefully I'll catch you guys on next one. Bye for now.